Oh, good morning, everyone. Oh, welcome. Thank you so much for joining us. We're going to get started in a couple more minutes. I'm just going to let everyone have an opportunity to jump online. Um, do feel free to jump in the chat and let me know where you're dialing in from today and what you're really hoping to get from this session so I can make sure I do cover those things off for you. So I'd love to know where you're dialing in from today and what you would like to get from today's session and then just spend the next minute or so before we jump into the session getting yourself ready make sure you've got a drink notepads whatever it is that you need um, in arm's reach to make the most of our time we have today Okay, so we are at 11 o'clock, so we are going to get started. Um, yeah, so we've got some people dialing in from Sydney, which is the Academy team. Um, yeah, do let us know where you are joining us from, joining us from today. <laughs> um, so my name is Elizabeth, I'm going to spend the next 45 minutes or so with you this morning, going through some job set strategies and taking you through just a few things that you can add in to your job search to help you um, find that dream role and land it as quickly as possible. So just a little bit of housekeeping. Do make sure, um, you know, to make the most of today's session that your phone is on silent. You've got all those extra tabs closed. If you're anything like me, you've probably got a hundred um, tabs open on your laptop so do make sure that you can focus on today's session and what I'd really love you all to do is to take one thing away that I say today that you're going to put into practice and towards the end of the session I'm going to ask you to let me know what is that one thing that you are going to put into practice today um, if there is anything from today that you really love and really enjoyed and got value from We'd love you to get social with us and share kind of your experience today um, via social media. So you can obviously tag us um, at Academy XI on Instagram, and you can also join our community on Facebook, Instagram, and LinkedIn. So please do come along and say hi to us. Uh, we'd love to hear more about you and your journey and where you are at. So today's session, what we are going to go through is using LinkedIn to network. How can you do that? It's always the best way of doing this. We're going to talk about your career documentation and how to ensure that you have that ready for when you're starting to apply for those roles once you've found them. We're going to work through how to design your 30 second elevator pitch so you can introduce yourself at networking events and also use it in interviews as well. We're going to go through what are informational interviews and we're going to talk about follow up. So are you looking for job search strategies that will accelerate your job search? Um, you've made potentially hundreds of applications, you're submitting your CV, your cover letter, and it's still not really landing you the gig that you want. If this sounds like your job search, you're in the right place today. So to, during today's masterclass, you're gonna learn five job search strategies that will help you tap into your professional networks to accelerate your career transition. 
So haven't introduced myself yet. So I am Elizabeth and I am the career coach here at Academy XI. And it is my mission to support our students of Academy XI to really transition their career and ensure that they land their dream jobs once they have finished their studies with us. And uh, today I'm here to help you with some practical job search tips um, to, to get you started as well on your journey. So first things first, LinkedIn. Um, if you're not already on LinkedIn, I strongly recommend you create profiles. I am always amazed by the number of um, people looking for jobs who don't use LinkedIn. Um, it is an amazing resource and completely underutilized by people looking for work. So if you don't have a profile already set up, I strongly recommend you do jump on there. It is very different to Twitter, Facebook and Instagram. It is a professional networking site. It is there to help all of us grow and develop in our chosen careers, but it can also, it is an extremely powerful tool um, from a job search perspective as well. So I'm going to share two strategies with you that really um, kind of resonate around LinkedIn and using LinkedIn. But the first thing is to pinpoint positions that you would like to apply for or companies you would like to work for, okay? So I'm just gonna, hopefully you can all see the video um, on my screen right now. So this is taking you through, go onto your LinkedIn and find companies, right? So go into that search bar and find a company that you're interested in working for. So showing you academies here so if you want to come and work for us you can find all of our team members right by clicking on that and you can scroll through and go okay well what team do I sit in am I user experience am I you know looking to become a career coach what are the roles in an organization that you're interested in and who can you add to your network how can you network with people who already work for organizations that you would like to work for how can you build up that connection so i strongly recommend you know if you do have kind of your top five dream companies you want to work for start by looking up those companies on linkedin and finding the relevant people to you in your chosen career path and reach out to them. So reach out and let them know. And another thing you can also do is, do you already know people at that organization? So is there already people you're connected with that you weren't, you didn't know that were there? Reach out to them, reconnect with them, re-engage with them, restart that conversation and let them know that you're interested in a position at their company, and ask if it would be okay for them to put in a good word with you um, or you with their hiring manager or the recruitment team, HR team, as you go through, okay? So how do we do this? But how do we make that initial connection on LinkedIn? Um, and this can be quite an intimidating process sometimes, all right? The worst thing that is going to happen on LinkedIn is if you reach out to someone, the worst possible thing that's going to happen is they're not going to respond to you. They're just going to ignore your connection request. And that is okay. It happens. Um, but the people who do respond are going to be really valuable to you in your job search process, okay? So you're gonna go on, you're gonna view their profile. That is the first step you are gonna take. So if you don't know someone and you've never met them before, you're gonna go, you're gonna look at their profile and people can see who's seeing their profiles on LinkedIn. And then you're gonna ask for a connection request, okay? So, you're gonna follow their profile. You're gonna like and comment and interact with their content, okay? So you've followed them, reviewed their profile, you've followed them, and then you're starting to engage. What are they posting? Are they creating content? Is it something that you can add value to? How can your name and your face, your LinkedIn profile picture, keep popping up in their feed? And the best way to do that is engaging in the content in which they are sharing telling them how much it means to you, what value you took from it, liking and commenting, okay?
And then you are going to send a re connection request. Okay, so you're not going to go straight into that connection request. You're going to follow them. You're going to engage in their content. And then you are going to reach out to them if you haven't already met them, right? So if this is someone who you haven't met at a networking event, haven't come across before. You just really like the look of their profile. They're in a job that you would love to have. This is the process that you are going to follow. So here is an example of the kind of thing you can say in that connection request. So when you um, connect with someone on LinkedIn, if you were doing it on your laptop or your desktop, it will ask you if you want to send a note. It doesn't default to this if you're doing it on your phone. So I strongly recommend you connect with people you don't know through your laptop or through your desktop. So you have the an easier ability to personalize the request. And you're gonna say something along the lines of, hey, you're gonna insert their name. I recently discovered that you're a senior UX designer or whatever it is their job title is at whichever company, I admire your company's mission and values. I'm currently building my professional network and I would love the opportunity for us to connect here on LinkedIn. And you're going to obviously end off your sign off, your name, make it sound authentic to you. Um, the language you would use. So when they do actually start talking to you, it is you, okay? Um, it's not, you know, a carbon copy of how I would do it use your words in your language, but you want to personalize that message, you want to use their name, you want to make it really clear to them, you actually have spent the time to, you know, hang out on their profile page and understand who they are, what they're about, and tell them why you're connecting with them. And this is the first step in building that meaningful relationship, okay, that relationship that can help you with your career. And then once you've done that, what you are going to do is you're going to send them a thank you note. OK, so you've connected with them. They've accepted your connection request. And then what you're going to do is you're going to shoot them a quick note to say something really thanks to continue the conversation. OK, um, keep the message short and sweet. People are busy. So you want to make it as easy as possible for everyone to interact with them. And you're going to send this thank you note, even if they don't respond to your message. So sometimes you can send personalized messages and people will accept your connection request, but they won't actually then um, DM you. OK, they'll just accept your connection request and you can see whether or not that has happened through your LinkedIn. And if once someone has accepted, they haven't responded, you're just going to send them a quick thank you note to let them know that you know that they're in your network and you're grateful um, for them being part of your community. And you can ask all sorts of different questions. So if it looks like they've transitioned their career, which is potentially what you're looking to do, you could ask them a question of, oh, I'd love to know how you got into UX UI. I saw that you previously worked in carpentry. For me, obviously, I would ask them, how do you find it here on LinkedIn? You know, some people love LinkedIn, some people don't. Um, but find a question that starts a conversation and a type of conversation that you want to continue to have with that person, okay? And that is how you start that initial conversation. So with someone you've never met before, that is how you can build that relationship and that connection to ensure that you have a meaningful professional network around you to support you with your career goals. LinkedIn strategy number two for job search is all about LinkedIn groups. Now, I don't know if you've come across LinkedIn groups before, um, but there are a number of, well, there's lots of groups on LinkedIn. Not all of them are active. Some of them are not very active at all. So be mindful of the ones you join. But the second part to using LinkedIn is to connect with others in your industry, which will really help to expedite your job search. So find groups and join those groups and interact with people in those groups with quality conversations, sharing your thoughts, ideas, your opinions with others inside these groups provides a great way to get to know others and this will really start to help you 
naturally build connection with people. Um, so lots of people are like, why should I use groups? And my answer is 100% use groups. LinkedIn groups are virtual meeting rooms or forums, okay, where people with similar interests can post and host, host conversations around topics that they want to learn and share about. So participating in groups allows you to show your experience around a subject and start to grow relationships with like-minded people. So many people in these groups may currently be colleagues, they may be future colleagues, they could be people who could offer solutions to challenges you're facing, or you could provide partnerships and opportunities for you to grow your career in the future. So others could potentially be future customers. So, you know, once you're in employment, th these people in these groups could be people that, you know, you're going to sell to or going to work on projects with. So by sharing your experience and participating in conversations, um, being a reliable source of information within groups, you will have the opportunity to build a really valuable um, network around you. So the first step with groups is how do you find the right group, right? So LinkedIn makes it really easy to find groups um, that are relevant to your industry, your audience, your chosen professional. Within LinkedIn, you can use the platform to search um, on keywords, okay? So think about the keywords that are in your industry and used in your profession and you can search on those. And then you can also see who already, already belongs to those groups, right? So once you've found a few groups that you like the look of, go and check them out. Who, is there anyone already in your network that's in that group? If there is and you're not sure you wanna join it, Go and message those people, reconnect with those people that are already in your connection. Say, hey, I noticed you're part of X, Y, and Z groups. How do you find it? What value do you get from it? Now, there's two types of groups on LinkedIn. There is public and private. So if they're public, you just need to hit the ask to join button. Um, and then you can just start interacting immediately. Um, private groups, on the other hand, require your request to be approved okay so a bit like a connection request someone has to approve it where public groups you're just in straight away so you can join up to a hundred groups currently on linkedin but be aware not all groups are actively managed so make sure you spend the majority of your time in pre groups you find a managed well and there is consistent interaction okay you don't want to be in a group where there's not really much going on there's not much community building going on there's not much engagement you are there for a reason and your purpose is obviously to position yourself as an industry expert in your chosen field of um your chosen field and to help you get a job, so to connect with people that are in your industry that can potentially support your job search process. So do be mindful. I don't actually recommend, although you can join 100 groups, I don't recommend that you do join 100 groups because there's just too much noise then. So find, you know, three to five groups that you feel you can interact with because you want to be a meaningful part of that community in which you are joining. You cannot be a meaningful part of a community in a hundred groups. So think about how much time you have and how much time you're truly going to want to invest in this process. And then pick the number of groups that you join from there. So it may just be one or it could be, you know, five or a hundred. If you have loads of time, it could be a hundred. But think about what is your time? What can you give um, with all networking you get? what you give so the more you can put in the more you're going to get out from it so be mindful of truly how much time do you have to participate in these things as well so how do you participate in a group so when you are in a group take the time to familiarize yourself with the content the people sharing it what type of questions are being asked what type of things are being shared before you dive straight in and you know do your first post Relevant content is the only way to take full advantage of LinkedIn groups. So when you are sharing content with others that they're interested in, you're going to build more connection, okay? So do be mindful of that, right? So you want to think about what type of content 
is already being shared in that group and what kind of type of content can I share? So you want to be showing off your expertise by asking, answering questions that others have asked is kind of, you know, step one. And then the next thing you want to be doing is you want to post articles and ask questions. So share articles or blogs that you have found and ask group members questions relating to that article. So if there's um, something in the industry that's changed recently or you found an article particularly interesting, share it in the group. Other people may find it interesting to read if it is relevant to that group's audience. And if you ask a question that helps to build engagement, okay? If you just post something up and there's no question, what are people going to engage with? So you want to make it really easy for someone to engage with you. The third thing you want to be doing or not doing is you don't want to over promote, right? You don't want to be the loudest person <laughs> in that group. Um, your goal when posting articles or answering questions is not to promote yourself or what you are doing, but it's to build a relationship. So when you use words, me, I, or my, your content will more likely be sent, will be seen as promoting, okay? So you wanna be careful around the language you use when you're asking questions, and you don't wanna be the loudest person in the group. You don't wanna be the quiet one in the background. You do wanna interact, you wanna build meaningful connections. But use this space that LinkedIn create in those groups in the same way you would use a face-to-face -face networking event. How do you interact? You know, how do you start that conversation with someone at a face-to-face -face networking event? How do you build on that conversation? So do be mindful of the language in which you are using in those groups as well. And then the next thing, just moving the slides oh too far okay make a connection all right you want to make a connection so if you're finding that you've interacted with one person's particularly content a lot in that group or someone has interacted a lot with your content then send them a connection request okay build some familiarity and then actually add them into your personal network on LinkedIn. So just because you're a member of a group, it doesn't mean all of those group members become your connections on LinkedIn. And then you could potentially set up an informational interview with them, which we'll go through a bit later on how to do that. And don't forget other networks. So if you have been interacting with someone on numerous occasions in a group, connect with them on other platforms, okay? Um, so Twitter or find their business page on Facebook if they have one. Most people are participating in groups for the same reason you are, and they are happy to connect and extend relationships with you across platforms, okay? And then you can just see on the slide now, um, a way to find groups in different groups, all right? So there's keywords there, there's some filters, UX, UI, what are you looking for? And then you're going to join them. You're going to find the ones that work for you and you are going to join those groups. And we, I spoke earlier about targeting certain organisations. So this is kind of my final LinkedIn tip um, for today. But if you are targeting set organizations, we spoke about finding the key people in that organization that work for that organization that you connect with and you can build a relationship with. Another really good thing to do in your job search to get super involved, make sure you're following those company pages as well, the pa company pages in which you would like to work for. This reiterates your interest in the organization, um, the positions in which they have available. But it's also a great way to stay informed about an organization, like what they're posting and any new positions they may have. So by following their page, their content is going to start showing up in your newsfeed. So they might not have any jobs right now that are suitable for you. Um, but if you follow their page and it pops up in your newsfeed, um, you're then going to be one of the first people to be notified that they are hiring. So find those key pages that you're keen in. And again, don't follow hundreds and hundreds of pages because your newsfeed on LinkedIn is just going to get too busy 
and all of the good stuff is going to get drowned it out so be be specific and who, well, who do you want to work or really think about it the next step or the next thing to have ready is your career documents okay and what do I mean by career documents? You're probably asking. So I mean your cover letter, your resume, your LinkedIn profile, your portfolio, something that showcases your work, depending on the industry and what you're you're in you may not need a portfolio but if you're in UX UI if you're in graphic design then you definitely need a space where you are showcasing your work so people can see what you have done so you want to make sure that your resume your cover letter your portfolio and um, LinkedIn profile are ready to go okay you want to be able to quickly customize each of these items if needed when you are sending out your applications, okay? So the two things that will change the most, generally speaking, your portfolio is probably not gonna change. Um, your LinkedIn profile, you're gonna spend time optimizing it and making it so you're positioning yourself as an expert in your marketplace. But then your cover letter and your resume, you're gonna have, pretty much it's going to be done. They're going to be ready to send out, but you're going to ensure for every application you send, you are actually tailoring those documentation, those documents, okay? So when you look at a position description or a um, job advert, the way I like to describe it is that's your marking criteria, okay? We can all remember times back to school and exams and submitting coursework. There was a criteria we had to match to get certain points, right, to get the grades we got. And that job advert, that is that thing. So look at it. Do you match those things? You know, the things they're saying are going to be the key responsibility in that role. Have you spoken to those things in your cover letter and in your resume? Have you highlighted examples of when you've done those things before? And they will be slightly different for every role in which you apply for. So do make sure you are personalizing as you go and making those tweaks to ensure that your cover letter and resume lands and resonates for every role in which you are applying for. Okay. Um, a question has just come through is, is it necessary to make your portfolio public, especially when you are a beginner and have only one simple project on your portfolio? This question might, oh no, no question is silly at all. It does not sound silly. Um, I get... <laughs> Having a public portfolio, I would say, is best. Um, you actually don't want to make it overcomplicated for a hiring manager or um, someone in a recruitment team to access your portfolio. I have seen in the past that people put um, on their resume um, the password to their portfolio. So they've got their portfolio link and the password. And it just gives that hiring manager another thing that they have to look for. Um, so. I would think about making it public as long as it's at a place where you're happy. If you're sharing it, if you're using it already, make it public. Only people with the link are going to find it. It's very unlikely that someone's going to find your portfolio um, through Google. So it is really those hiring managers and those organizations that you're applying for that are going to find it. So don't give them another step that they have to follow. Um, you know, if they're clicking on a URL, on um, your resume and they're going to that page and then they have to then go back to the documents you've sent them through to find the password, that can actually be a barrier for you. So yes, I would recommend having it public. Where should I post my work? Um, anywhere, <laughs> really what works for you. So find a platform that or what that works for you, okay? So, you know, if you're really familiar with Squarespace, use Squarespace. Um, if you're using Figma, use Figma. If you wanna use a WordPress site, use WordPress. If you want to create a presentation document and share it through your LinkedIn pro profile, you've got um, a section on LinkedIn where you can add in, um, that you can pin stuff to the top of your link or the middle of your LinkedIn. And I'm forgetting what the word is, you can pull it up there. 
Should I create a new LinkedIn profile if I have another career also? No, um, definitely you don't need to, um, just have one, do not confuse people, <laughs> just have one, but be careful on how you're wording it. Um, I know it is difficult when you're going through career transition, if you're already employed, don't want to be out there kind of going, oh, look at me, I'm now moving into this, if you don't want your current employer to know, but you can do those things in a really subtle way, so no, you don't need two um, LinkedIn pages, okay? So we're going to move on to Elevate's pitch. And I have seen a few more questions come through and I will go through those. Um, but let's talk about your elevator pitch, okay? So you want to develop a 30 second elevator pitch. Your elevator, your elevator pitch is an essential resource in your job search. This is the quickest way to let others know of your accomplishments and your qualifications, okay? This is also a great way to let others know what kind of problems you solve for them. So no matter what your industry is or your chosen profession or where you're choosing to um, transition your career into, you are solving a problem. May that problem be for the employer or the end customer. You are solving a problem. Okay, so what is that type of problem that you're solving? So having a 30 second elevator pitch ready will give you more confidence when you're networking with others about job opportunities. The key to a great elevator pitch is to make sure it aligns perfectly with your resume cover letter, your LinkedIn profile, your port and your portfolio. Think of it as kind of like your career story, right? You don't want, when someone sees you, sees your cover letter and then they see your resume, see your LinkedIn profile, they see your portfolio if you have one, and then they meet you in person, which is when you get to do your elevator pitch. You want all of that to make sense. It needs to join up. Like it can't be, they can't have one person on a document, on a piece of paper, and then meet someone who is very different. You need to ensure that it is authentically you throughout all those documentations and then also through your elevator pitch. So think of it as your story. Each, each layer, each interaction they have of learning more about you is adding more depth to their understanding of you, but you want it to be consistent, okay? So step one in crafting your elevator pitch. Having a well-crafted elevator pitch, as I said, is essential for your career transition. Your elevator pitch should be designed to ignite a two-sided conversation. So it's not all about you. You actually want to start a conversation for your elevator pitch. So the first thing to do is to identify who you are and who you help. Start with a simple statement that grabs the attention of the other person and piques their interest in you and what you are all about. So here is an example that you've got on your screen right now. So who are you? How would you answer this question? So for me, I'm a career transition coach helping young professionals find careers that bring them joy and fulfillment. That is me. That is what I do day in, day out. Okay. So that's my elevator pitch. What, what are the few words about you? What are you doing? Why? The next step is your why. Okay. So the next step is to identify your why to keep the other person engaged, mention or why you do what you do. This will help you better explain your purpose and better clarify your passion and your commitment to what you do. This will also be one of the reasons why the person you are talking to takes action at the end of your elevator pitch, okay? So here's another example. One of my greatest passions is to provide meaningful and actionable career guidance to professionals that learn top not that land top notch job search strategies, learning tactics, interviews, prep skills, career transition approaches. So you've got what I do. How do I help? This is how I help. Career transition tips. They land have top-notch search strategies then okay so after you've got this webinar so you're going to have a whole bunch of new strategies that you can use 
Um, so that is mine, but think about yours and in your profession, okay? What is your step two? And then step three, explain what makes you unique, okay? After you've explained who you are, who you help, and why you help them, then you want to talk about what makes you special, what makes you unique, and what makes you different. And you are unique, you are special, and you are different. There is only one you in the world. So what is unique about your approach and how you do what you do? Um, you are not doing what you do the same as everyone else. There is something about you and your personality, your unique point of difference. Know what that is and talk about it or with confidence. An easy way to do this is to mention a great accomplishments. What are some of the largest problems you've solved or major contributions you've made? This will help keep the momentum going in your credibility, okay? So through this pitch, you are building credibility. In addition to career strategies, I help my clients explore career options, enabling them to move into fulfilling work. I provide actionable advice to those that are striving for more. Okay, so that is my unique point of difference. It's actionable. And then I am reiterating that it's about striving for more. Okay. So now your elevator pitch is very similar to your professional bio. Okay. It kind of flows. And then step four includes a call to action okay your goal at the end of the conversation should be to get that person to take some kind of action this can be something like an exchange of business cards or a request to connect on linkedin or better yet a follow-up meeting so one of my favorite ways to get the other person to take action is by asking them a simple question for example I might say something along the lines of, do you currently find joy and fulfillment in your career? And this will be the start of a new relationship that leads to your end goal. So what is the thing that you want? What is that conversation starter? What is that question you can ask to continue that conversation with the person you are speaking to in a way that helps you get to your goal and then step five practice and revise one of the best things you can do is practice your elevator pitch out loud do not be afraid to change your pitch it will develop and change over time as you have more and more experience and as you get more confident in your chosen field okay so what we do we pop it all together um that is the next step. So I am, list who you are, helping, list who you help. One of my greatest passions is list your passions, okay? I've been fortunate to list some of your biggest, the biggest problems that you've solved or some of, you know, your really great achievements. And then have you ever, what is the question, okay? So you're going to pull it all together and that is your 30 second elevator pitch. I know as we went through there, you were probably scratching your head going, oh my gosh, how am I going to say this all in 30 seconds? It really is quite short and condensed, okay? And it's something that you will hone and get more and more comfortable saying as you go through your job search, okay? The more you interact with people. As I said, informational interviews. So this came up, this can be something that you do off the back of meeting someone at a networking event, um, talking to someone through a LinkedIn, but what is an informational interview, okay? So that's a really great question I hear you asking, what is one? Because not many job seekers actually do these and do them well, but they can really put you ahead of the 
job search hunt, okay? An informational interview is a simple meeting with someone who you can get some great career and job search advice from. And done well in a very specific way can lead to that person becoming your ally, your advocate, and your mentor. They may offer to pass your resume along to a hiring manager. They may tell you about jobs before they get advertised and make wonderful introductions for you and give you insights into how to weave certain things into your applications that's really going to help you. So how can you do that? And sometimes an informational interview can actually turn into a real interview for a job. The term informational interview um, was coined by a gentleman called Richard and he wrote a book, What Colour Is Your Parachute? It's one of my favourite um, books for career guidance. So if you haven't come across it, um, I do recommend jump to go, go to your local library or go to your local charity shop and see if you can find a copy of What Colour Is Your Parachute? There's a lots of great tips in there. But informational interviews are a great way to inspire others to pass you leads or pass your CV along, okay? Reach out to people who already work in your sector or already work at organizations and companies that you are targeting in your job search. The key is to be genuinely interested in that person's experience. An informational interview is not a place where you talk about yourself. It is a place where you ask some really open questions and you listen to that person. They need to believe they have something to offer you. Never ask for a job when you're reaching out to make that first connection, okay? So it's not jumping on a Zoom call with them, having a 20 minute coffee chat and going, do you have a job for me? This is about building genuine connection. Um, if there's no job, the person you target is likely to say no to meeting with you, right? Like if they, they don't have a job and you've asked for a job and they don't have one, they're not gonna meet with you. So instead, you want to ask some specific questions. The purpose is to get to know that person, that industry, trend, hiring practices, and their story. So here is just, you can see on your screen, a little structure on how that can go. So thank you very much for meeting with me. I'm currently transitioning my career into the UX UI field and looking um, for career opportunities. I saw on your LinkedIn profile that you work as a senior UXer. Um, and you go it, you know, you go on using your words, you're asking for advice, you want to know more about them. Would you mind, would they mind if they asked you a few, you asked them a few questions, okay? So this is kind of how you can start those connections. So you're not going in asking them for a job. You're asking, um, you want to learn from them. You want to learn about their experience. You want to hear their story. And the key is people love talking about themselves, okay? We all love it. We all love that opportunity to be like, oh, yes, I can really help someone here. You know, they're straight, you know, fresh, i I've done that, I've been there, I've seen their pain, I've gone through that journey, how can I help them? And you wanna ignite that in someone when you're connecting with them, asking for an informational interview, okay? So once, here are a few questions you can ask, okay? What does a typical day look like for you? So, you know, you've, you managed to make that connection and they're like, yes, okay, let's jump on a quick Zoom, let's have a 20 minute virtual coffee. All of the questions you are going to ask them, how are you going to get them talking and what questions, well, what answers to questions are going to be beneficial to you and your job search or your job transition? So really think about, well, yes, you want to get something from this, right? But you don't want to out believe asking for a job, but what all information is going to help you? So what does a typical day look like? If you're new into the field, well, what does a typical day look like? Do you want to know what a day looks like for them? And is that going to be helpful? Is that going to give you information that's going to help cement whether or not you want to go into that industry or not? What do you enjoy about what you do? 
what do you find the most challenging about what you do let's be realistic here not all jobs are a bed of roses and candy floss and unicorns every single day there's there's always some bits of every role um, that are challenging so find out what they are for other people and think about would that be challenging for you and if it was challenging for you do you want it to be a little bit part of your job or do you not want that to be part of your job at all what skills does the market value? So this is a really good question to help you understand one, what to include on your resume, how to position yourself as an expert in the field and are there certain skills that you need to grow and develop? What skills do you see um, demand in the future and why? So what is your future growth and development? What are the real personal attributes and organization like your values? Okay, so if you are having an informational interview with someone who works in an organization you'd love to work for, find out about them. What do they want to see? Ask those questions. Um, any advice you can give me about looking for a role? And have you heard of anyone hiring? So have you heard of anyone hiring would definitely be your last question, okay? Not your first question. So that is how you can structure an informational interview with someone. And then finally, follow up. So you want to keep track of all of the connections you have made and the positions you are applying for and follow up. This is one of the best ways to fast track your job search. We are all inundated with emails, connection requests and texts. So it's really easy to forget about a conversation we had last week. Keep yourself at the forefront of someone's mind. Follow up within a week or even two. And then don't let that become the last contact you have with that person. Now, you don't want to bombard them with text messages and emails every day. But you, you want to keep that natural flow and rhythm of communication with them. So um, thank them for their time thank them for their connection requests, continue to interact um, with their content as well. And don't just follow up to find out how that person can help you, okay? Make your follow up a meaningful conversation. And maybe be that you found out it's a person's birthday. Um, so start a conversation that way. Hey, I saw it was your birthday on Tuesday. Happy birthday. Hope you had a wonderful day. Or what did you do? How can you bring back some meaning into that um, conversation? Think of establishing your network and building on these relationships. Um, I can't stress how important it is to build a meaningful professional network around yourself, one that can actually help and support you and you get something from it, but also so do those people in your network. Now, it does take a little bit of time to build up um, a really good professional network. So you need to be patient and do your best to let it flow naturally. You don't want to force these things. And just a reminder, get social with us, share what you've done. Like I'd love um, you to jump in the chat and let me know kind of what, what are the key things you've taken from today and what are the things you're now going to start doing in your job search. And we are going to open up to questions, um, but just one final comment from me. Networking is not just for Christmas, okay? Um, you will be networking like crazy during your career transition and you will be building meaningful relationships to help you land your dream job quickly. Do not ghost people after you land that dream role. You need these relationships to stay alive. We don't have jobs for life these days, so your network is going to be a powerful tool throughout your whole career. So do not drop your network the second you've got your job and forget about and forget about the help they've given you. You want to continue to nurture these relationships over time because yes, today you may land your dream job and then you're busy. But in 
two, three, five years time, you may be looking for another job again. People don't want you just to reach out to them when you want something. So this is about building meaningful, long-term connections that can help you across your whole career. Okay, so I am going to go through some of the questions uh, that we've had. So if you do have any questions, do drop them in. We've got um, about 10 minutes to go through them all. So I'm going to start going through the questions um, that we have. And if you do have any you want to add in, just let me know. Yeah, looking, um, so one came through saying that they're someone as anonymous, looking to learn more about how to sell my skills as I transition into a new career space. So the best way to do that is to connect with people, is to share um your ideas and insights so comment on other people's posts on linkedin and have a real um kind of brainstorm yourself um do a bit of a mind map around well, what are your transferable skills so you're going into a new industry what skills do you have from your past experience that are really valuable in that industry you're going across to and be really clear in your mind what they are and how you can position them in a new way. So what is your new narrative? What is your new career narrative with your past experience? How does that add value? How does that make you unique in the career you're transitioning into? Um, are cover letters still relevant? I've been told many times it is not necessary. And um, do get calls without one. I would say cover letters are still relevant if you are transitioning your career, okay? Um, they are probably less relevant if you have five, 10 years experience and you are applying for a job in the same industry, in the same field. But a really well-crafted cover letter can be your point of difference. It tells a story. It gives you space to explain how your past experience supports the job in which you are applying for. So for someone who is transitioning careers, I think, um, well, my view is cover letters are hugely important. And if you craft them in the right way, they can add a lot of value to just adding some context and some richness uh, to that career transition. So you say, so you're transitioning into UX design and your previous experience has been in structural engineering. So how much space do you really have on your resume to kind of sell that story and show that story? Your cover letter enables you to tell that story to someone so they're not looking at your resume going, oh, they're a structural engineer. Why are they applying for a UX UI role? How are you answering those questions for your resume? So that would be my question. And it's fantastic that you're landing phone calls uh, without a cover letter, uh, but I would recommend you use one, okay? okay. Do we remove past experience that is unrelated to our new career on LinkedIn? No, actually. Um, so it doesn't matter on LinkedIn. You can have as much experience as you want. And it's your career journey, right? I, We have different chapters in our career. We all do different things. I've transitioned out of um, running HR teams into uh, career coaching and mentoring. And it's, it's a nice transition. But your past experience as texture, it has context. So I would look at how you're writing about those past experiences on LinkedIn and being selective in what achievements you're sharing, but you don't need to take them off your LinkedIn. Um, I'll leave it on there as your journey um, and it shows someone the whole career journey. So no, I'll leave it on there. How to answer a behavioral question when you haven't demonstrated the behavior in the past. Um, in that situation, so generally speaking, when someone's asking you a behavioral question, they want you to draw on real life past experience. They don't want hypotheticals. They're looking for you to use that star interview technique. Um, but if you don't have 
an example, if you honestly have never demonstrated that behavior before, been in a position where you've needed to demonstrate that behavior before, be honest about it and say, if I was in this situation, this is what I would do. How important is it to generate your own content on LinkedIn? Um, so it just depends on your intention behind the content in which you're creating. Very few people actually create um, content on LinkedIn. I think I read a stat that less than 5% of LinkedIn users do create content on LinkedIn. So it's a huge point of difference if you do start creating content. Um, but I do know that it can be quite time consuming and quite overwhelming. So it, it's not a must. You don't have to create your own content to get traction on LinkedIn. Um, but if you're engaging in other people's content, that is great. If you feel confident enough to create your own content, go for it. And that doesn't mean you have to post five times a week. Um, you can post once a week. You know, if you say, okay, actually my time to post is I have 20 minutes on a Friday morning. I'm going to post every Friday morning. I'm going to give myself 20 minutes to write that post. And I'm just going to post it and that's it. So just be consistent in the timings of when you're posting. We you don't have to post every day. And um, it would be a huge point of difference if you start posting because so few people actually do. Um, if you can be quite transparent about your job search, um, posting content can be really helpful. I've seen so many people um, get a lot of engagement and a lot of support from their communities on LinkedIn when you know they've done a post saying hey this is me I'm looking for a new job this is what I'm looking for um, can you help me out um, those posts do quite well but it, you might not be in a position where you can do that so really content is 100% your choice it will add value but it's it's not 100% necessary no when applying for jobs, is it a good idea to connect to the hiring manager directly once you have applied for a particular role that shows who the hiring manager is in the job description for a better chance of going through to interview? I don't know if it necessarily gives you a better chance of going through to interview. Um, they, they're going to look at your skills and experience and they're going to weigh that up against other applicants. But it is definitely a good point of difference. It's a way of them remembering your name so when they see that application they can oh yeah I've already met I know this person this person's connected with me so yes I do strongly recommend it depending you know if it's got their name if you can find them on LinkedIn reach out start building that genuine connection with them um, and that's around building your professional network and it will there will be value in that I'm changing career, uh, totally different career field. If my skills are not matched with the requirements for a particular job, as I don't have past experience for a new job field, what can I add to my cover letter or resume? Um, it really depends on what you're applying for. I would definitely say in any field, um, there's gonna be a whole bunch of soft skills that are transferable. There is always something that is transferable. And it's going back to finding that new narrative, okay? So what is it about you that makes you good at what you're going to do? What is your unique point of difference? And speak about those things. Um, in your resume, what is the job you're applying for? What are they asking for? <laughs> And have a real critical look at your past experiences. Is there anything that is similar at all? You know, if they're looking for someone who has managed large projects before, and yet you're not a project manager, but you you have been part of a project team, well, highlight that in your resume. Um, and in your cover letter, you want to tell that journey. You want to explain how your past experience actually enables you to do what you're applying to do. Um, so the next one was very hard to transition when the industry tends to pigeonhole you 
in a role based on your previous experience. I have tried very hard for Australian market is small and hard to navigate. We would tips also help here. Also, I've tried LinkedIn connections, but very few people are eager to help. I'm really sorry you've experienced that on LinkedIn. I normally find LinkedIn extremely helpful. Like it's normally a very good community. Um, yeah, 100% my tips will help um, you. I don't obviously I don't know from this question <laughs> um, what industry you're transferring to and transferring from um, but keep at it um, position yourself in the industry um, as an expert engage in people's content go to networking events that are relevant to the field in which you're transitioning to and start building those meaningful conversations and just one more question we have time for because we are running out of time um so i'm just wondering less of a career transition question but more about transitioning public to private sector okay after 17 years in um, public are there any stigmas associated with this transition when uh, reaching out for networking and okay cool yeah so <laughs> it's interesting there is this um i'll be completely transparent there is sometimes um generalizations about the public sector and the private sector and how they are different there shouldn't if you're applying for jobs if you're not necessarily transitioning career you're just transitioning out of um, public and into private should if you're if you're talking to that position description so you've got the position description as um, I guess like I said your marking criteria and you've got your resume and you're matching up your experience and the examples you're sharing in your resume to that position description um, should be fine there shouldn't be any stigma around that i i know plenty of people who have transitioned between the two um generally speaking i think it's actually harder to go to from private into public um not the other way around but yeah you want to really start building up that meaningful network and i wish you all the best with it um it's, if you do have any specific questions around it do reach out to me and i can see if i can help and support you a bit more but no um i don't feel there will be any stigma in it at all um, as long as you can highlight all of your skills and what you're capable of you're going to be fine so it has been an absolute pleasure um, spending the last hour with all of you i'm so sorry i haven't had a chance to answer all of your questions that have come through um, but please do feel free to reach out to me um, and ask those questions um, via LinkedIn um, and I will do my best to answer them for you in there and I wish you all the best of luck with transitioning your career and your job search and networking, building out your elevator pitch and ensuring your career documents are ready to showcase you and showcase you in the best possible light. Um, so you do start landing your dream jobs very, very quickly. And like I said, it's been a pleasure being here with you today. Um, please do share on social media kind of what you found helpful about today. Um, I'd love to, you know, let's keep this conversation going. And yeah, I wish you all the best of luck with your career transitions.